Hello, good morning everybody. Welcome to our Linton Lasers webinar this morning with um, Laura from YBA. Now I'm just going to get Laura into panelist mode, so bear with me just a second. Now you're going to rejoin with us um, as a panelist, Laura. So let's get your video started. There we go. Now you're on mute, so can you unmute yourself? Yes, I think so. Not now. I'm there you all are. Ready to go. <laughs> good. <laughs> Hi, Laura. How are you? Yeah, really good. Really good. It's... The sun is shining. It's a glorious day. No, it's raining. Yeah, it's yeah, lovely. Oh, so jealous. <laughs> it's not sunny with you. It's absolutely pouring down. How is it? Yeah. That's what happens up north. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> July feel, feels like October. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, thanks ever so much for joining us for the webinar today. I'm really excited, really looking forward to it because it's a, a hot topic, obviously, at the moment, um, helping aesthetic clinics to get more leads. So thanks Absolutely. for your time. Mm. Yeah, pleasure. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. No worries. Got lots to share. Good so to I hope you're good. all buzzing and you've had your coffee. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to um, give everyone a couple of minutes, really, just to just to come in and join us. Um, and in the meantime, I'm just going to run through a bit of an introduction to Linton, just quickly, and then we'll we'll get you to screen share and start your amazing uh, presentation for us today. Sure. Okay. So, can you see my screen, Laura? Just check that, yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay, perfect. Right, okay, so welcome to today's webinar, everyone. Um, so today is gonna be a real focus on um, how to get your clinic more sales leads through Google. And we're delighted to be joined by Laura Moxham, who um, at Linton, we know Laura really well. She actually looks after our um, Google AdWords account. And um, so I want to, give the opportunity really to talk about some of the quick wins that you can get with Google, but also to talk about the, the bigger strategy, which I know that Laura's company is really excellent at. In fact, um, YBA, um, which is the name of Laura's company, actually um, have been voted by Google as one of the best agencies in Europe for actually helping a clinic to get more leads and helping businesses to grow online, wasn't it? So if Google thinks they're good, they must be good. <laughs> <laughs> and one so, of the top three percent in Europe. Well done, you. Thank you very much. Thank Welcome. you. Well, it's my team. It's my team. They're awesome. <laughs> so Laura's going to come on and, and she's going to share um, a great webinar with us this morning to um, just just go through some of the insider tips and knowledge, really. And then um, Laura also does free audits. So if you wanted to have your clinic site um, audited, then that's a service you offer, isn't it? Just to see how people are doing at the moment. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you that don't know Linton, uh, we're hosting the webinar this morning. Like I said, we're, we're partners with Laura. So um, we've run lots of business support webinars um, over lockdown and we always use trusted partners to come on and talk about their areas of um, expertise because although we're experts in lasers and aesthetic technology, um, we're not a you know Google ads you know mastermind company. So we like to get other specialist um, speakers in to come in and share their knowledge. But for those of you that, that don't know anything about us at Linton, what we specialize in is aesthetic equipment. So we produce a range of different um, lasers that do all sorts of aesthetic and cosmetic uh, procedures. Um, and we also supply lasers on behalf of Deco, which are a huge, one of the biggest laser companies in the world based in Florence and we're their UK distributor. So we've got a really wide portfolio of different equipment dealing with lots of different aesthetic concerns. Um, and we have other divisions as well. We have divisions in nuclear lasers, in surgical lasers, in conservation lasers as well, but we're really a expert in that laser arena. So if you haven't had chance yet to have a look at some of the webinars that we've been running in lockdown then we have created our, our own YouTube channel where you can access um, previous webinars that we've run so we've run lots of just free educational webinars over lockdown on all sorts of topics related to aesthetic subjects 
um, hair removal, tattoo removal, removal of semi-permanent makeup uh, with lasers, and also quite a lot of um, business support um, webinars, as I said as well. So it's worth checking out um, Linton Lasers on YouTube just to go back and watch over some of those uh, webinars. And if you are interested in um, doing any training virtually at the moment, please do check out our website as well, where we've got various different virtual masterclasses on. So we actually work really closely with Manchester University because we're a spin-off company from Manchester Uni. Um, and our, our team of directors are all PhD physicists that you know have come through the ranks of the universities in England, Oxford, Manchester, Leeds, um, and still have strong links with, with the, the physics teams there. So um, our courses are delivered by PhD physicists who are absolute experts in laser. And we have a hair removal masterclass um, running next week. And we also have a tattoo removal masterclass running next week. And these are virtual, so you can join from the comfort of your own home. So for those of you wanting just to cram a bit of last minute learning in before hopefully you all go back to the busiest clinics that can possibly be, then uh, yeah, send us a, a quick email or um, drop me an email. I'll put my, my email into the chat and uh, you can squeeze that in just before we, we all go back to normality, potentially. <laughs> so that's what you're here to help us with, Laura. To get your books, to get the phones ringing off the hook. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, you guys have done some amazing webinars over this lockdown. You've shared oh, thank you. a wide range of variety that can really, really help clinics, and I've got great feedback from some of our clients. So massive, well oh, done. Oh, thanks. Really That's really great nice job. to hear. Good, good stuff. And and the same for us as well. You know, we've we've had great results so far since you've been handling our accounts. So you know, really wouldn't make a recommendation like this to our customer base um, unless it was solid. You know, and it was gonna. Um, you know, I felt like it was a really good investment for a clinic to take. So, so I'll, I'll hand over to you. Um, someone's just started mowing my lawn, so it's probably a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. The law have some and close your windows. Oh, he's <laughs> working at home. <laughs> I'll hand over to you, Laura, and I'll watch the chat. If anyone's got any questions, just pop it into the chat, pop it into the Q&A. Um, and would you like to field them to the end, Laura? Are you happy for me to interject as you're talking? What would you prefer? Um, do them, just hold them until the end, actually. Sure, will do. That'd be good, yeah. All right, perfect. Okay, great. So can you see my screen? Uh, let me show. Oh, no. Can't seem to get there. Can you just need to enable me to share the screen? Or you're muted. Aha, there we go. Yep, okay, we can see that now, Laura, perfect. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> Good. Well, thanks a lot, everyone, for coming along. I know there's lots and lots of you out there that need to fill your books. And so this is one particular element that I would love to share with you because there's, um, you know, being at the top of Google is a vital part of being able to enable that to happen. So I've got tons to share with you. So what we need to be doing is seeing how we can get more sales leads and inquiries for your clinic through Google. So this is what we want to do. We want to have a full book of inquiries coming into your clinic so that you are back to back with uh, with bookings and people will be at home desperately searching, um, you know, thinking oh, what I could do with this treatment, I could do with that treatment. So there's plenty of people out there um, that are ready to to come over and see you. So that's kind of the key thing. But Google Ads is a journey. It's not something that you just switch on and it automatically opens the floodgates. It's not as simple as that. It requires time, effort, dedication, and it's, it's a really sophisticated portal that is changing all the time. Um, 
and I'll tell you a little bit more about our business and how we're able to do that. But it is um, it is quite interesting. So where we are today is you think, OK, we need to get all these inquiries coming through. So it's really, really easy to be able to sit here and go, OK, over there, we need to get lots of inquiries. We just flip, flick a switch. However, where we want to get to is um, is a different place and we need to be able to enable the tools to get us to where we want to be. So where we are ha here now seems like an easy place. This is where we are. We need to be getting all these clients through and getting there doing the switch of getting all these clients through isn't necessarily that straightforward. So like I say, it's part of a journey and with Google ads, it's very data driven. It's very, um, you know, customer orientated. It's understanding how people integrate online, what floats their boat, what makes them click on that effort making things happen within your Google Ads account. So really, it's very, very data, very numbers. It's very kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's all about learning, observing how people interact, and then reacting to your Google Ads account. And also, just the ad dimension to that is the Google Ads and its algorithms change all the time. So it is part of the journey. It's not something you can just saying Google Ads doesn't work I've tried it but it's not working and that may be if you put your hand up that may be how you're feeling obviously COVID is a bit of a different scenario um, but often when we get new people coming through to us Google Ads is just a tool I think it's a drama. back in the 80s it ain't what you do it's the Hello, way Laura. that you Yes, hi. To interrupt you, but yeah. we, I think that your connection is quite poor at the moment, and the um, audio is sounding like ro quite robotic, so we can't quite get what you're mm. saying. Okay, uh, let me see if I can move. So I think it's um, internet connection because it's the it's not the sound, so I don't think it's your mic. I think it's more that the Wi Fi is unstable. Let me go. I'm going to, you're going to go for a tour around my house now. I'm just going to go Perfect. downstairs to, closer to the router. Uh, let me, we did a little test and it was okay, but let's see. Oh, how yeah, we the go. test was fine, wasn't it? It might be because yeah. you're screen sharing. I think sometimes if you're. Oh, maybe. Share as well. It's... Is that better? Is that better? It sounds great now. You were great. Yeah. It was great in the intro. Uh, no yeah. There. Do you want to run, run, screen, run yeah. through a slide and we'll see how it is and then hopefully... Yep. So shall I back it up a bit? Is there any bits Yeah, that is that didn't... okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, of course. Sorry everyone, we'll... Um... Yeah, apologies, that's really frustrating. I know you invest lots of time in, in learning. So, um, yeah, so what I was saying here is that Google Ads is very much a journey. It's not something that you can just turn on and it automatically happens. It's about learning the data. It's about looking at things and reacting accordingly. Do not think that you can turn on Google Ads and it will happen like you know a flick of a switch. So what I asked there was if anybody's done Google Ads before and they've played around with it or they're currently doing it, um, that would be great just to get a share of, of numbers in terms of um, you know where you're at. Yes, and Google Ads, this is what I get. A lot of people bring me up and say Google Ads doesn't work. You know, I've tried it. I have, um, I've invested some money and it's just not working in the way that I anticipated it to work. However, 
that's what I mean in my previous slide, that it isn't something you could just flick a switch and it automatically works. There are so many different elements of it. And that's what I'll go through in this presentation. It's a step-by-step -step process to enable that to, um, to work to its, to its best for you. And I think of it like a banana rama song. Cast your mind back to the 80s, if you may. Um, there's Banana Rama was a great band, and one of their songs was, you know, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it that gets results. And I think that is so, so true of many things, but none more so than Google Ads, because, you know, anyone can learn how to do Google Ads, but doing it well is the bit that makes the difference. And so you don't want to be coming out saying Google Ads doesn't work, because believe me, you know, we've got very successful growing business helping many clients, and we know it works. Uh, it doesn't work for every business, but it, it can work exceedingly well. But it's a tool, it's what you do that makes a difference. So if you imagine, you know, heat, heat you put ice on and it turn to water, you know, and so Google Ads is just a tool to enable you to hopefully open um, open the gates for more services and more into your business. So let's use it the way that it's meant to be used, in that it's meant to be building a sales machine for you, really, you know, so that you put money in at the top. And you get multiples of that at the bottom. And that multiple in terms, are in terms of people saying, hey, I'd like to book in um, laser, laser hair removal treatments. And, and then that particular customer then repeats. And that particular customer refers. And, you know, and so it goes on. You want to be putting money at the top, but measuring it and understanding what is working in Google Ads, more of that and less of it that working. So that's what I mean in that it's measurable, it's controllable, and it's scalable to a certain extent as to what it can do for your clinic. So, all right, Hayley. It's, no. Um, you can kind of just get what you're saying, but it's not a pleasant experience, you know, for if you're watching. It's, um, it just goes quite robotic and some words are missed completely. So, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if there's anything you can do about that because at the I'm moment. Right near the router. Um, <laughs> Go lie down next to your router, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> let me try. I don't know if you if you want me to fill for five minutes and you've got an Ethernet cable or. Uh, let me just try here. Let's see if that I'm you literally sat right next to You've got so many there. nice. Yeah, yeah you are. are. You wouldn't get this oh, in my house. You tell I like grey. <laughs> um does that is that clearer we'll give it a go give it a go okay yeah. so shall i back up um I, th I think we're okay i think we're okay yeah. i mean you can get, okay the essence the of what yeah okay the essence of it is that it's a, it's a tool that you can use to be able to grow the clinic by getting sales leads and inquiries um it is scalable it is measurable you know you can see what's working you can't so and what you can't so um, so that's like the main key benefits. So what we want to be getting to is use the Google Ads to be able to fill your books. That's that's what we're trying to achieve. So a quick case study for you, just so that you can see firsthand um, a, a few things that we have for you. And Hayley, I'm just going to check in with you. Is that better? Am I a robot or am I a little bit more like a normal person? It's not brilliant. <laughs> no. We've done a oh, webinar before, much. haven't we? Um, we've yeah, been fun. I know. Oh, I mean, I, I don't. I'm right yeah, next I to mean, the router. The suggestion is to try it without screen sharing. Um, or maybe if I share the screen, I don't know if you're able to send it me, or we, we just give it a go without a screen share because it was okay yeah, there. Okay. Okay. Um, and we can maybe email the presentation for uh, people afterwards. Yeah, of course, of course. So frustrating. Right, well, I've stopped the screen sharing. So if I chat for a couple of minutes and just see how that yeah. works. Yeah. And hopefully, I'm so sorry, All guys. Right. We're, with really you. We're with you, Laura. This is, this is just the, the perils of um, <laughs> <laughs> the 
these times, isn't <laughs> the it? The challenges of COVID. The challenges, the challenges of, COVID. of COVID. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So bear with me. I'll share all these um, all these presentation slides with you, but um, I'm going to rattle off. I tend to speak at a million miles an hour, so please just shout to Haley if um, if you want me to slow down or repeat or anything like that, because I know I'm kind of just talking at you as opposed to seeing something. So so sorry, guys. Okay. So case study. The um, a clinic that we worked with, they were spending £5,000 a month on advertising. And that, you know, to me, sent alarm bells because they don't necessarily need to be spending that much for a local clinic. And they've been doing this for a while, been spending this, this money for, for quite some time. And I said, look, let me audit the account and have a look to see what's going on. Because he felt that, you know, he couldn't dedicate enough time to it and wasn't sure really if it was getting you know, true, true value. So we looked at it and there were some basic mistakes that were happening there. So without going into too much technical detail, with keywords, which is what you bid on to show your ads at the top of Google, they'd got it on what's called a broad match, which is an old fashioned way of Google enabling them to, to, to show the ads to whoever they want to, to a certain extent. So uh, so we were able to make those changes. So the, the spend went down. We, we reduced it by 41%. Their incre inquiries went through the roof. Um, and this is a, a very happy clinic that's getting many more leads, spending much, much less. And it's a, it's a scalable, repeatable and controllable method for that business. I just wanted to also just tell you a little bit about us as a business. So um, I've got a picture of my team and we work with clinics and, and other business owners as well, but a lot of clinics to be able to give them visibility of what's going on with their Google ads. Some came with us that hadn't done Google ads before, some that had and had been frustrated by it. So we share the visibility. You want to know how much am I spending and how many inquiries have I got through? don't really want to know much more than that. And if those don't kind of work out, then you want to delve into the detail behind it. So we give a lot of visibility. We work in partnership with our clinics and, um, and just really an extension of their marketing arm. So just to give you a little bit of the background story as to how I got into it, because I'm a business owner, much like you guys are, and empathize with all the, 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 the pains and challenges that we have. So my background is worked in T-Mobile. Um, I was in their corporate division, very big company that I felt I could be there today, gone tomorrow. And I'm a very passionate person that gets behind stuff. And, and I felt that um, I couldn't make the difference that I wanted to. My dad's an amazing entrepreneur and I've always looked up to him as the things that he's achieved. So I thought, no, I'm gonna step away. I'm going to do something different. My brother had a little home computer repairs business. So I joined him to see if I can help grow that business. And the first thing I found out about was this Google AdWords thing. And I thought, what on earth is this right? This, let, let's try this out for a bit of marketing. And on a back of a fag packet, tried it out. And the phone just didn't stop ringing. We got lots and lots of inquiries. And they've now got over 4,000 customers. And when I joined, they've got sort of 300. So... So we got many, many more business inquiries coming through and great successes. So some other business owners came to me to say, you know, we've tried Google ads and we can't get it to work. Can you help us? And very passionate about business growth, very passionate about Google ads because I could see how powerful it was. I started an agency, very small, just starting to help with other businesses. And we've kind of grown a lot since then. And as um, Hayley very kindly pointed out, very proud of my team and everything that we've achieved. And we're now a premier partner of Google in the top three percent agencies across Europe. So a real kind of lovely rub stamp from Google. However, it's not necessarily about that. It's about our clients and getting them um, the business growth that they need and using this tool. So what I'm going to share with you today is about some of the five main steps for Google Ads that you should consider. Whether you're doing it or not, you will, I promise, get some value of some other things that you could do if you decide Google Ads possibly isn't for you. There's lots that you can take away that's actionable and practical. Firstly, what is Google Ads? And I've got a picture here of a paperclip in front of me because some people think that it's called paperclip. Um, or, but it's not, it's a pay per click model. So what that means is when you, um, when you say to Google, I want our adverts to the show at the top of Google, when somebody clicks on the ad, that is I'm going to pay Google an amount per click. 
Now, it's very technical behind the scenes as to how much you pay, um, but I won't bother you with that right now. But it's a pay-per-click model. So what you see, and I've got a screenshot in front of me, is the term lip fillers, which I typed into Google. There's three ads at the top. Then underneath the ads, and you can tell the ads because they've got a green um, website address and a little green box to the left that says ad. So, uh, so it's clear, but not to everybody, it's clear that the adverts are at the top. They, they're usually, and they should be, very relevant to what somebody's typed in. Now, underneath that, you have the Google My Business, which is the map that turns up underneath. Now, please, everybody, if you haven't already, please register for Google My Business. It's a free service from Google, and it allows you to be on that map at the top of Google. So, um, so if you just go to Google My Business, register your information, you'll get a confirmation link through, which you need to prove your address, and then you'll be on that, um, on that map. Then underneath the map is the organic listings of the websites. And that you might have heard the term SEO, search engine optimization. That's where websites, um, you can put content on the website so that Google feels it's relevant for that particular search. So for example here, lip fillers. So that's, that's kind of the, cli the climate of Google ads. Now you may be thinking, well, hold on, what's the difference between Google advertising and Facebook advertising? Um, I'm sure many of you do Facebook advertising. Now there is a massive difference. The difference is buyer intent. So with Google, I'm going to Google to look for a clinic in my local area that can provide me lip fillers or laser hair removal or some kind of specialist treatment. So I'm going to Google to type in laser hair removal NIMI, laser hair removal St. Albans. So that's where you're advertising to those people effectively have a, um, a credit card in their back pocket and they're ready to do business and their you know, they're, they're, their intention to buy is there. Facebook, however, is slightly different in that we're trying to advertise to people who might be in the market for it, might have um, other likes and interests that are similar to those that we feel our ideal customer would be. So that's the difference. The intention is there with Google, whereas Facebook, we're kind of trying to bring them in. Now, I've got a picture of a, um, a little aeroplane in front of me. Now, this is Google five years ago, where you had some very simple dials that you could change and you could make Google ads work for you with kind of luck rather than judgment. On the next slide, I've got a picture of a dashboard, like a Boeing 747 or some like high, highly complex um, uh, flight deck here with all different things and colors and dials and um, things that you can turn. This is what Google Ads is now. It is exceedingly complex. It is ex exceedingly um, data-driven, automated. There's all sorts of things going on. So, so it's very complex, always changing, and it's not necessarily one for beginners. So I want to share some information with you that will help you kind of get going on that. Um, but I'm bound to probably say it, but if you can, if you're going to do Google Ads, please work with a professional that knows what they're doing with this so that you don't come away saying, hold on, Google Ads doesn't work for me. Because it is, it, you know, it is really complex. I wouldn't want to go and do a laser, laser hair removal treatment on myself because I wouldn't want to damage myself. Um, so Google Ads is much the same. You need to, to, to find a specialist that can help you. Aside from that, before you start Google Ads, and before you start any other marketing activity, please, please know your numbers. Don't go into a marketing activity without knowing what you want to achieve from this. So we want to know what is it that we're trying to achieve. So here's some numbers. Please think about these for your own individual clinics. So if we think of the average spend um, in year one of, say, somebody that's having lip fillers, uh, let's say it's £600. That's the average revenue that you may get. Obviously, it's different for each clinic and each treatment, et cetera. Let's say gross profit, say 50% of that. So your, your gross profit for that particular sale over that period of time will be £300. Now, you need to decide as a clinic what you're prepared to spend to make that sale happen. It might be £150. It, you know, it's up to you. You need to decide. There is no right. There is no wrong. However, um, you need to decide what, what that is for your business. From a marketing perspective, the more you can pay to acquire that sale, the higher volume of sales that you're going to get generally. So let's say you're prepared to spend £150 to get that sale. Let's say, for argument's sake, you convert one sale out of the four inquiries that you get. 
So there's a 25% conversion rate is what we call it. So your goal cost per lead would be £37.50. I hope that makes sense. I know I'm just kind of sounding numbers at you, but it's really important to know these numbers so that you can look at your Google ads or you can look at your marketing activities and say, hey, we've invested a thousand pounds in this. We've got this many inquiries and this many sales. Yep, it's working. Let's do more of it. If you don't know these numbers, you don't know if it's working or not because, you know, what gets measured, you can then manage. So um, off my... Um, off my soapbox box for that one. So stage one with Google Ads, this is the foundations and this is why it's really important to know your numbers. We need to get something set up called conversion tracking. This allows us to know the numbers of how much we've spent. Not only that, but it will tell us how many leads and inquiries we've gained from the Google Ads campaigns. Now, a conversion is a fancy word for the action that you want somebody to take. So this action could be a phone call. So somebody may come to your website and ring you up and inquire. It could be somebody filling out a form. It could be somebody putting a, a, an inquiry onto live chat. Those are typically the three things that you would want to track. If you've got an onboard, uh, sorry, if you've got a booking form, then that's fine too. Um, it, it is whatever... Um, whatever stage you want somebody to track um, within your Google Ads account. So that's called a conversion. We need to track that physical action. Uh, I won't go through the techie details of how you do it, but it's to do with putting some code onto your website that recognizes when the action happens. That then sits and, and talks to your Google Ads and it allows you to say, we are spending money on these things that aren't, the actions aren't happening. And this money is spent on the actions that are happening. So let's spend more money on what's working and ditch the stuff or understand why the other stuff isn't working. So number one, conversion tracking, really important. If you haven't got it set up, pause your Google Ads account immediately and make sure you've got this set up because it could be not working for you. It could be working an absolute miracle. So action points. Firstly, first step, um, work out what your average order value is, work out what, um, how many convert from lead to sale and what your goal cost per lead would be um, and set up accurate conversion tracking if you are doing Google Ads. Firstly, conversion tracking. Second thing is we need to be looking at what keywords and targeting we've got set up within our Google Ads account. And so looking at keywords, this is kind of the, the first stage of where it happens. This is where kind of a lot of people go wrong. If we think back to what I was explaining Google Ads is about, it's about the intention. It's about what I'm typing to Google that is going to create right people to come to click on your ad and come to the website. So we want to be selecting the right kind of keywords. So get out of your own head and think about the ideal prospect that is sitting there, wants to get some treatments done, they're sat with their fingers poised above Google's, uh, sorry, the, the keyboard, what are they gonna type in? We don't want keywords that are researching keywords, thinking about, you know, what is this treatment? Because you can waste a lot of money on that. That is a strategy you can adopt. You need quite a big bucket of money to be able to go down that, that route. We want people that are typing in things like the treatment name, plus NIMI or the town that you're in or the, you know, the local towns, that feels to me as if it's a real buyer intent type of keyword. So grab yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee, sit there and think, right, if I was my ideal prospect, what am I going to type into Google? That's some really solid keyword research that you can do. You can get very scientific with this stuff, but don't think about the service or the treatment that you're offering plus the location. That is very much around the buyer intent. Okay, so just to give you a case study, to bring some numbers to light and show you why it's so important. Um, working with a the clinic, they were working with an AdWords uh, guru and they were getting frustrated by the lack of inquiries. So we looked at the Google Ads, did a full review of it, and we found that they were spending money on the incorrect kind of keywords, very broad keyword. It was that researching, it was um, one key thing to think about with keywords, if it's one keyword, it's usually far too broad. You need to have at least two or three keywords. Um, so for example, laser hair removal is probably a bit too, too broad. We need to be having laser hair removal plus the town. 
So we, we um, got more buyer intent keywords and it significantly improved the outcome for this particular client. Spend went down 85%. Their, um, their cost per inquiry decreased by 73% and the click-through rate, which is the, the rate at which people see the ad and then click on it, increased by 446%. So it's massive and, and a really, really beneficial to them. Um, when we started working with Linden, you know, that's another example whereby we were able to tweak their, their keywords. Their keywords were pretty good, but we were able to tweak them even further and the cost went down by 20%, the conversions went up by 77%, cost per lead went down 48%. So you can see that that, that just one particular aspect of a campaign um, or a strategy, you know, a setup can significantly improve the outcome. So they're coming away saying, actually, Google Ads does work, this is brilliant. So that just brings some things to life. If you're not doing Google Ads at the moment, there is a tool that you can use to find out, you know, um, what keywords are being used, what, how many people are searching for these types of keywords, just to give you an idea of the appetite locally. And I've got a screenshot here of a, uh, an example of laser hair removal leads. So with that, we can see that roughly uh, 15,000 people are looking for these kind of keywords in that local area. Google estimates the number of clicks that you might gather. It gives us an idea of what the cost per click would be. It gives us an idea of what percentage are searching on mobile, on tablet, or on desktop. So the tool is actually within a Google Ads account, which you don't need to you know, spend any money. You can just open a Google Ads account and use what's called the Keyword Planner tool. It's within the Google, um, the Google platform. You can pop in some keywords, pop in some locations, and we'll give you give you an idea. Do not take it as granted. This is uh, just to give you a bit of a gauge because you really don't know how accurate things will be until your account is live because Google doesn't know at this point what your competitors are like, how relevant your website is, how good your structure is, and all of those things can significantly impact your, your results. One of um, one of the other things is, so sorry, yes, just action points now. So check your keywords. If you've got Google Ads accounts uh, set up at the moment, go through your keywords. Are they buyer intent keywords? Are you uh, spending money on keywords that possibly are, are um, offer people that are looking and searching but not going to make an action? Is your website good on mobile? Have a look to see, um, see if that's you know that, that's functioning well and um and so there's a couple of couple of things around the keywords and you can use the keyword planner tool to, to estimate what people are searching for currently so we've talked about conversion tracking we've talked about keywords hopefully you're still with me and you can hear me clearly we're now going to go into ads so this is the third bit along the kind of the process and ads are what you literally what you see in front of you as you've done this search and there are four ads at the top of Google. So it's really, really important that we do some, um, make sure that the ad copy that we select is very tightly aligned to what keyword we are bidding on. So this is where the structure of account is really important. So if we're bidding on laser hair removal near me, sounds daft but you want the headline to say laser hair removal possibly near me or the town name in there but you want the headline to pretty much be what somebody's typed into google sounds ridiculous but it means that if i type something in i see an ad that says exactly what i've just typed in hey i'm going to click on it so i'm going to have a good outcome as advertiser so we need to tightly link that to the keyword in the ad copy what we need to be also doing is offering a very clear call to action um, you know, book a consultation, uh, free consultation, book today, make it a call to action. We want to, we want to get people to click on your ad. So one of the other really, really important things to do in an ad is to make sure that you've got a difference between what you're offering and what your other local competitors are offering. So go to Google, do a search for one of these keywords, have a look to see what your, your competitors locally are saying and think, right, okay, how can we make a gap between what they're offering and what we're offering? Because 
we want to get eyeballs to your ads, not to, to, to anybody else's ad. We want to kind of push your competitors' ads out of the way and get people to look at yours. So what is it that they're offering? Could you be cheaper? Could you be, you know, have you got free parking? Have you, are you award winning? Do you offer a free goodie pack? What is it you're doing differently? Why should somebody engage with you as opposed to anybody else? Um, and family run, you know, that's, that's not great. Um, you know, it, it, think about yourselves, you know, what is it that's going to inspire you to click on an ad? I've got an example here um, of, of an ad and I'll, I'll share it with you because it's pointless me going through this, but essentially it's an example of a hyperhidrosis search where I've got the different ads and I can see what things are really co call out to me and what don't. Um, so I'll, I'll share that when I send the, the um, presentation through. So just an example here. So a clinic, Covent Garden Aesthetics Clinic, just to give you an example of having better ads. So they were working with an agency. They didn't feel that the strategy was really there. The results seemed to be fairly poor. But what we found, the key thing in their account, is that the ad copy hadn't been changed and they hadn't got a really clear link between the ad copy and the keyword. So their structure in their Google Ads account was relatively basic and needed some significant improvements um, and just looking at some stats in front of me the conversions went up 50 percent the cost per lead went 28 percent down just by really clearly aligning the ad copy um, and my next slide is, is sharing a covid um, example so this is with cool sculpting and, and mirror dry so we we um Many competitors of theirs were paused during during COVID and, and this clinic particularly wanted to carry on to be able to create leads during this period so that when they're ready and their doors are open, they've got a list of leads they can speak to and engage with. So we highly targeted and tailored the keywords um, to the ad copy and um, sort of COVID related and were able to, in, in the period between March and now to the um, compared to the previous period, conversions went up 63%, uh, clicks went up 103%. Um, you know, it, it really had some great outcomes. And that was a combination of the keywords and the ad copy, but also the fact that competitors just weren't in the, in the frame at all. There's some other advanced uh, tr treatments, some other advanced um, uh, solutions within Google Ads that you can use, such as expanded text ads, there's dynamic search ads, and responsive ads. There's various things that you can do. And, and so it's worth looking into that, but I won't take it up at this level. Um, but if, if you want to reach out and talk to me about these things, it's, then by all means do so. But what's what happening is Google's landscape is changing. It's using AI very much more now. So um, the responsive search ads, I'll just take out this one particular advanced level, but responsive search ads, what this enables us to do is to take out various points um, about your clinic, about your offering, and put this as kind of asset listings. And then what Google will do is it will use AI to understand the searches that are going to Google, it knows how they click, what they click on, what they don't click on. So it will change up some of the ad copy that you've got and the assets that you've got to present an ad that is kind of more scientifically proven to, to show an ad that they're more likely to click on. So this is where Google is going. It's very much around data. It's trying to take the risk out of, um, out of it for an advertiser. And it's getting to the stage where you can say to Google, actually, I'm prepared to pay X amount per lead. You, Google, go take the risk and allow us to, um, to show our ads to those people that are more likely to, to advertise. This takes some time. It takes a lot of data. Um, but it's where it's going and it's it's very very beneficial once you've got enough data to go down that route so responsive search ads are, are definitely a way to go so we've talked about conversion tracking we've talked about keywords we've talked about ad copy the the fourth part along this step-by-step -step challenge is landing page so this is the fancy word for the page on your website that you're taking people to don't underestimate the power of this because there's no point in spending all this money to get people to your website. They get to the page and think, oh, I don't know what I'm meant to be doing here. This isn't very clear. So I've got some examples which again I'll share with you on the, on the slides that I'll send around. The key thing is we need a headline. The headline needs to really be closely linked to what we have on our keyword. So if it's laser hair removal, 
have the headline laser hair removal leads for example don't get clever about it make it so so simple that people think ah right i'm in the right place that's great underneath that headline we want three key bullet points as to why you're different you've already done this hard work because it'll be in the ad copy anyway so three key bullet points as to why you're better different faster uh, um, cheaper if that's your route uh, award-winning whatever it is that makes you different put those three key bullet points underneath and then a very clear call to action on the right hand side book now Call Sarah in the in the clinic today for a, you know a consultation. Whatever the call to action is, just make it really really simple. And it's funny. There's um, there's a website that I came across, which is a website that you want to make it that they prove that it's so simple even a drunk person can use it and you know take that at face value but imagine you know somebody's had a few drinks they've come to a website imagine that they just need it to be so simple in front of them um and another example could be you know i, I have our our 11 year old daughter go onto the website of our client, clients and just have a look and i say right what is it that you want that this website wants you to do make it so simple make it really simple so a very clear headline three key bullet points a very clear call to action and then underneath as you scroll down the page you can put more information in there you can put some example testimonials you can put some trade bodies and associations you know so, so sort of trust icons as we call them and then you can give into more information about the treatment now don't forget they've done all of the research they don't necessarily need to know the ins and outs of the treatment they just need to know that you guys are the place to go um, another little tip which whether you're doing google ads or not make sure that your website is responsive on mobile really responsive on the desktop nothing is more frustrating for Google than, um, than a, a slow website and, and it will downgrade your website it will make you pay more cost per click because Google wants to provide its customers its searchers with a very fluid experience so uh, so just Google um, mobile site speed Google site speed and just put your website in and please test it and it will give you a report to show you the things that you can do to improve your website give it to your your web team or or, or whoever's looking after your website and make sure that it does kind of tick the box it is literally a, a you know a playing the game with google make sure that that's that's responsive for you to get the best outcomes okay so the next part apart from landing page is about the uh, sort of the technical wizardry that goes on in the background of Google Ads, and this is the, the data driven stuff. I love this stuff. So, we want to be measuring and improving your Google Ads. So, there's a whole heap of things that you can do. You can increase bids, you can put in negative keywords, you can optimize for the best day of the week, the best time of day to say, okay, I can see that between eight and 11, we're getting better cost per lead, whereas in the afternoon, it's a bit poor. So let's spend more money in the morning and down, you know, downplay this, this that we've got in the afternoon. All of this is controllable. All of this is a, you know, a click of a button. So use the data to help you get more for, for less money. So days of week, uh, location, so in your local area, you can find that particular uh, postcodes are more effective than others. And also demographics, so you can optimize your ads based on the, um, the age demographics and the gender demographics, which is obviously very, very important for clinics and quite significant. So, so that you can find some real outliers and you can say, okay, so we can see that females between 35 and 44 are the ones that are clicking, uh, but not taking action. So why is that? And dig into that detail. Whereas females between 45 and 54, for example, are clicking and taking action. Right, let's spend more money on these guys. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do in your Google Ads account. This should be done daily, weekly, monthly. There's a number of different types of things that you should be doing within your account, but it's very much around having statistically significant data that you can make the right changes for your Google Ads account. Um, but believe me, making the right changes can be a real significant impact on your business. However, before you do any of this, 
you could be getting a, a you know a real steady stream especially in the coming months where people um, you know when you're opening your clinics people are ready to rock and roll come down have a treatment make sure that your clinic is ready and you've probably done having listened to lots of linton's amazing webinars done some real significant changes within your clinic experience or your follow-up process make sure your clinic is ready there's nothing worse than getting the phone to ring um, and they ring up the clinic and, you know, it's not a great experience on the phone, you know, and you're spending all this money to, to acquire customers. We want it to be a fabulous experience. So you've got somebody great and engaging on the phone that's going to encourage that person to, to book in with you. So do a bit of a deep dive if you haven't already. Do some soul searching and understand that your clinic is ready. You know, you're ready for the follow-up process. You are offering the right proposition. You've got the capacity to look after these, um, these prospects so aside from google ads that's you know make sure that you guys are ready so just to recap um that you know know your numbers do some maths figure out what, what success looks like and um and so you can check in and make sure that you're gaining those things make sure you've got conversion tracking set up if you haven't turn it off get conversion tracking set up so that you can see what's working what's not keywords are we bidding on the right kind of keywords Ad copy, is the ad copy resonating with the keywords that you're bidding on? Is your landing page linking with the keywords that you're bidding on and the ad copy that you're showing? And, and also make sure that you are regularly optimizing your Google Ads account. It is not a set it and forget it thing at all. Otherwise you'd be ringing me up going, it's not working, it's not working. It's, um, you know, it's burning cash. So that's it, guys. Um, I'll send my slides across through Haley so she can share them with you. If you're doing Google Ads, I am more than happy to help out, give you a free strategy session. I can audit your Google Ads account. Very happy to, to, to help you guys out. So um, send me an email to team, T E A M, team at Y B A P P C bit of a mouthful, but um, ybappc.co.uk. If you're doing Google Ads, very happy to go in, do an audit, share with you what's working, where there's a wasted ad spend, where there's missed opportunities. Um, and if you're not doing Google Ads and you're thinking about it, again, I'm very happy to help out there, um, possibly do you know a quick search on Google with you to see roughly how much you could spend locally, what that may look like for your clinic. Perfect, Laura, thanks so much. I put your I think I've just checked the chat because I've put the email um, in there just um, oh, you might want to just check that I've got that uh, as it should be yep perfect absolutely perfect yeah it was good thanks so much for accommodating us there running around trying oh, to get so <laughs> so <working> well. <laughs> you know <laughs> I did my best impression of a robot for you and nailed it <laughs> no it was fine in the end it's fine we got it all and good. you did really well without your slides as well so thanks for that good good so can I answer any questions? Uh, at the moment, right? yeah. Um, we've not got any questions in the chat, but I think it's worth just um, uh, looking at the um, the keyword tool planner, uh, yes. keyword planner tool, um, yeah. and just sort of, um, you know, how is that a useful tool for people to use for getting an idea of what is going to work in their area, perhaps in terms of new product launches and things like that as well? Um possibly yeah you could you could use it that way yes um i guess it's it's just thinking about the keywords so you open the keyword planner tool and you can put in you can type in the keywords that you feel people would type in so you can use that to find out how many people are searching the the downside is that if it is something that's um that's not searched for very often, if it's a new product launch, then it's going to give you misreadings. And I wouldn't want you to think, gosh, you know, nobody is searching because it is a tool that works much better to look at historic data. And um, so the best thing to do with a new product launch really is just to, to launch a campaign, even if you just do it for a short period of time, just to get some data, live data. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. And um, Mark's just asked, how easy is it to understand how spending on Google ads maps into the bookings and the profits? So how do you get that kind of mapping of your spend across, you know, the, the actual return? Yes. So depends on what kind of system you've got set up. But um, but typically Google ads, you, you um, you'll be able to see the number of inquiries that you've got set up 
coming through the Google Ads. So would that be inbound phone calls and opt-ins? Now, if you've got a booking system that will link all of that together, you'll be able to see the bookings. If not, what you can do is you can set it up so that you can upload a spreadsheet into Google so that you can see the link between Google Ads and the bookings. It's not very easy, um, but, but another more simple way to do it is to be able to track the amount of phone calls look at the phone numbers that have come through, manually check that against your CRM system and see how many bookings came out of the back of it. So it is a little bit fiddly. Um, it, it's, so yeah, you'd be able to see the leads, but then you do need to do something a little bit more manual to find out the actual sales and booked appointments off the back of it. We, we track back the opposite way. So we track it that way as well. Um, but mm -hmm. we also track back each quarter. So we'll, we'll do a review of a quarter We'll look at the inquiries and we'll be able to, because, because the conversion tracking is set up so well on our website, we can um, see, for example, every inquiry that's come in on a particular product, you know, and, and we can see how many inquiries per product and we can see then through our CRM system whether they tracked into a sale. Um, and then we can break down at the end of a quarter every sale that we've had and look at, was it print advertising, was it exhibitions, or was it Google ads? Um, because every time we get an inquiry, we track that against their record. So yeah. every single time someone phones us or, or puts an inquiry in, they have a record set up and we log the lead source, we call it, so where it came from. Um, yeah. So we use Avartu in our clinic um, and uh, we use Microsoft Dynamics as part of the wider Linton business. So they're the two tools that we're using to do that. Yeah. Um, so just to delve into that a bit more then, does it track if someone who's clicked through then uses your online booking form on your landing page? So yeah, it does, doesn't it? So um, if someone clicks on an ad, goes to then the online booking form, that's a, that's a conversion, isn't it? Once they've hit the thank you page, so that's the technical way of being able to see if it's gone through. So if somebody has gone through, gone onto the landing page and filled out like a consultation form um, and hit the thank you page, that's where the script sits. Once it's hit that page, that then talks back to Google Ads and sits in your Google Ads account. So as long as they hit the thank you page and you've got the conversion tracking um, codes sat on there, yes, that would all trigger through. And you can set these conversions up against all sorts of things, can't you? So we have them set up, for example, if someone fills an inquiry form online, but you could also have it set up to see how many people are watching a certain type of video on your website or how many people yeah. are reading a particular blog on your website to get a feel for what people are interested in. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you can set up wider goals within Google Analytics um, that, that will tell you, you know, sh show me the people that have um, spent X amount of time on this particular page. Yeah, there's all sorts of things that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and what's a good budget guide to start with? Oh, I don't want to have slopey shoulders, but it all really, really depends on the location, the competitiveness. Um, I would say a minimum of say £500 ad spend, um, anything less really, it, it's not going to bear you fruit because if you just think the average cost per click across all Google's keywords is £2.50, you've got to get enough people to click onto your website, then a proportion of those take action. So I would say, you know, minimum of £500 advertising spend and upwards it, you know it doesn't have to be tens of thousands of pounds you know because there's only a finite number of people that are looking in your local area but if you're a small town then um then the ad spend will be less than say a bigger city mm -hmm. it's what you get back for it like you say isn't it it's working out what's the price per person you yeah. know and, and what that 500 pounds turns into for you yeah yeah and the, the important thing is that repeat value of a customer. It might be that you kind of break even or even make a small loss on that first um, first patient uh, session. However, you know that you know the long term value, and repeat customer, and the referrals, etc. That's where the value really, really is added. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Are there any other questions for Laura then? Just give people a couple of minutes just to see if there's any last questions. If you've got any questions afterwards that spring to mind, then of course, just pop them through to me on team at YBA. Perfect. Yeah. I think it's a good opportunity to do the audit, isn't it? And just to see. Um, do you think there's been a... Ch uh, 
has the landscape changed for clinics doing this over lockdown? Are there any things to be aware of that might need to be different from a clinic strategy pre or post lockdown, do you think? Well, I think we changed up the ads quite a lot for some of our clinics to, to uh, during COVID to um, recognise the change in the landscape. The fact that, you, you know, you need to point out how safe you're going to be um, and, and give comfort to people. So there's those sorts of things. But also over the coming months, the cost per click and the competitiveness is going to increase because everybody's going to want to share a voice. So um, so the cost per click will change much like it changed to the advantage of our clients, whereby you know the cost per click went down and they got many, many more leads because other clinics just felt that they needed to stop. So yeah, it will be a bit of a bumpy landscape over the over the coming months, I think. Mm. Um, but really it goes down to what is it that makes you different? How can we attract the right sort of people to click on your ad as opposed to any of the other competitors? So really talk about what you're doing differently to give people the confidence to come to your clinic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, I think one of the key things to take away from this is that um, you can it. It's not actually so much about the amount of money you're spending, but that that spend is being allocated in the right way. Yeah. Um, and so making sure it's not going to waste and that it's being tracked like, you know, within an inch of its life by, yeah. by an expert, really, isn't it? To make yeah. sure that every penny is counting and it's and it's genuine genuinely giving you a return on that investment yeah and that's why i love it so much because it's so visible it's so transparent you can see that you could say right okay i've spent a thousand pounds this month we've had x amount of people to our website and we've had this many inquiries if you've got the conversion tracking set up right then you know whether it's working or not you know it's not a, a you know a wing and a prayer we know that it's definitely getting you the leads and as long as those are converting into bookings then brilliant yeah. Um, and Andrew's just asked, can you remind us where we check the site of the, the speed sites? The oh, yeah. So just, just literally type into Google, um, Google site check um, or speed check. And uh, you'll see there that there's there's a number of different speed checkers, but just make sure it's the Google one. So they've got a Google mobile one and they've got a Google site check. Perfect. Yeah. OK, lovely. Well, thanks ever so much for that, Laura. That was fab. Oh, it's a pleasure, Hayley. And we'll make sure that everyone gets a copy of your slides. Yes, absolutely. Bedtime reading. <laughs> and any last questions, um, do feel free to drop them into um, an email for us. And uh, yeah, I'll make sure that Laura gets them. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks Pleasure. for joining us this morning. I hope you're all um, enjoying getting back to work, getting a bit busier. Great. Perfect. Thanks, Bailey. Thank you. See you all soon. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.